the Michael Angelo Hotel, the place where Colonel Patrick Carrigaya's body was found on New Year's Day. Police suspect foul play. When the police were called in, they found a rope and a towel with uh, blood on it. And uh, preliminary investigation indicated that he, um, he had his neck was swollen and that led the police to not to rule out the fact that he might have been strangled. And a case of murder was opened with the sentence police, which will be handed over to the directorate for priority crime investigations for further investigation. Rwanda's former spy chief was in exile in South Africa. He was heading military intelligence in his country but was later demoted to spokesperson for the army. Rwanda denies it was a hit. Those are the things that happen in most situations where there is a problem or an incident with uh, someone who worked to serve the government and uh, became a dissident. Whatever happens, even a robbery, people will always think or assume it comes from uh, the state they served. But he has been here opposing for the last six years. So this is not uh, a policy of Rwanda, and uh, why now, why not when he started, when it was still hot. But who was Karigaya? He was a law graduate from the reputable Makerere University. In 1990, he served in the Directorate of Military Intelligence in Uganda. Between 1994 and 2004, he was Director General for External Intelligence of Rwanda Defense Forces. He then became army spokesperson and was arrested and detained for indiscipline. In 2006, he was stripped of military rank of colonel. In 2007, he fled his country. It's not the first time a top Rwanda official has come under fire on South African soil. In 2010, Faustin Nyamwasa, a former chief of the army in Rwanda, had a narrow escape after being shot in the stomach on the driveway of his upmarket Johannesburg home. Nyamwasa and Karigaya fled Rwanda together after being accused of plotting a coup against the government of President Paul Kagame. Janjicha Uke, SABC News, Johannesburg.